Welcome to another episode of Behind the Science on Location. I'm your host, Jennifer Fournier. One of many challenges that protein scientists have been trying to tackle for centuries now is understanding just how proteins interact in the complex human body universe. Let's go to one of the original labs here at Waters that helped to develop a cool solution to this hot topic. Hi Keith, you are just the person I was looking for. Hey Jen, how's it going? Good. So I am working on proteins and I'm trying to understand protein-protein interaction in the human body and I was wondering if there are any techniques that I could use. Well, you know, one of the biggest ones that's out there and it's been around for a long time is X-ray crystallography. Okay. It's a great technique. You know, you can really deduce a lot of things about protein structure that way and even some binding. Uh, experiments can be done that way, but it really has, a, has one major drawback. So what is that drawback? Well, really, it's, it's a snapshot in time and space. It's it really, if we're looking at how that protein interacts in your body, physiological conditions, you really can't tell that with x-ray crystallography. Yeah, I really need to understand the interaction within the body. So are there techniques that I could use for that? I got something for you. It's actually called right here. It's called hydrogen deuterium exchange, or HDX. So I have heard of HDX, but I've also heard that it's not necessarily robust and reproducible. And you know, that's a fair point, and it probably was true about 10, 10, 15 years ago. It was a technique that really pioneered in academics labs and really was not uh, easily adoptable in, in industry and biofarm. And the, the biggest reason for that is because everything was performed in an ice bucket. Really, and if you want reproducible results, working through an ice bucket every day in and day out is really not what you want to be doing. Yeah, I would think that'd be really difficult. So how are we changing that? Well, again, through, through a collaboration we had with, with uh, folks around, around uh, the US, we developed an HGX manager. This basically is a glorified refrigerator. It's a, a box that has our valves, our columns, everything inside there to keep everything nice and cool and stable for the entire experiment you want to run. So basically, this module is a glorified ice bucket. Absolutely. Can you take me through a little bit more how, how this technique works? I can do one step better, Jen. I actually have a video I can show you. Sounds great. All right. So, Jen, what we have here is uh, two different flavors of the HGX system. Uh, on the left, you see the, audit, the manual system, which works fine in most academics labs. They don't need the automation necessary. And on the right is what really tends our biofarm customers tend to like. And it's a full-blown automation with robotics. That's what you saw me standing in front of when you came to find me. That robotics platform handles everything from sample prep through the workflow, through the injection to the system, and triggers the mass spec and all the acquisition uh, steps necessary. So it really is a turnkey solution. And really, beyond that, that platform, beyond the, the notion of the robotics, we've also done steps to make every bit of the workflow possible. Again, automation you see, but also things like digestion with an enzymate pepsin digestion column. We also have the, the LC system, the M class, with the mass spec you saw. But the biggest piece that we added later in the game was the informatics package, dynamic software. It was great, we found early on in the collaboration, we did a great thing by getting people their data much faster, much more reproducible, but they were stuck in bottlenecks and been working up that, those results they wanted to see. And with the, with the advent of Dynamics, that informatics package, we really pioneered that level of, of workflow. Also in there, there are things like analytical standards, just to test the robustness and reproducibility of the platform. We want to make sure that every result we give you from start to finish is consistent and constant with what, what you're hoping to get. So Keith, it really sounds like we've revolutionized the way that people are using HDX technology. And it sounds like our academic collaborators played a big role in this. That's absolutely true, Jen. It, it, we wouldn't have been possible to achieve what we've achieved without the, that benefit of those collaborations. It was through a, a series of both early beta evaluations, through iterative designs with, with collaborators, from not only the hardware perspective, but even the software we talked about earlier. So what other applications are people doing with HDX? Uh, so biofarm companies do a lot of things like epitope mapping. They want to like, study where proteins and small molecules or proteins and proteins interact. Uh, things like formulation stability. They want to make sure that protein stays in the right form and function during, form, uh, during uh, drug, drug release and drug development. But also, but we have a lot of academics doing very, very interesting things. Not only is looking at Alzheimer's and the HIV virus, but also a collaborator in, in Singapore is looking at the dengue virus and seeing what HGX can tell them about the structure of some, such an elusive uh, molecule. That is so neat. So I have to admit that I'm quite relieved because when you pointed over to this ice bucket, I really thought that we were in the ice bucket challenge video and I'm so glad that I didn't get wet today. Well, Jen, it's still early. I can get some water in there for sure. <laughs> no, I think we're good. Thank you, Keith. You're welcome. The HTX system is a full package tool that will get you past one of the challenges you face understanding the complexity of higher order structure in the human body. If you want to learn more about this cool technique and see how this tool advances science, watch the videos at the link below. And join us next time for another episode of Behind the Science on Location.